Not everyone has the budget right away. Not everyone has the specific campaign that's right for you right away. So build the relationship. Maybe at the next company they work at, then it makes sense for you to work with them. Building relationships don't seek transactions. I think the creators that can sustain their success over the long haul are people that follow their genuine curiosity. So it's more about direction than activity. The best creators are more content strategists than creators. That's what you're selling to these brands. That trust, attention, that loyalty from your audience needs to be protected at all costs. Welcome to High Level. My name is Axel, and today I have the privilege of interviewing my friend Tom Boyd. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Tom, if you guys don't know him, he's the creator of Bonus Footage. It's one of my favorite pages on Instagram. He's always putting out crazy good advice for creatives. How do you think about content and whenever you're seeing other creators and you're finding this like patterns, how do you analyze that and, and package it? The thing that I measure my ideas around is would I tell this to a friend? Like, like I, cause I have a lot of friends that are creatives, that are entrepreneurs, that are trying to put ideas into the world. Uh, and over the last 10 years, you know, working in the music industry to working with independent creators, I've, I feel like I've just seen the same conversations come up, whether it's with them or my own experiences. And whenever I see a pattern, I just write it down in my notes app. And I'm like, that's something that I want to say to the camera. That's something that I want to share. Like you said, it's a lot of the stuff that seems like common sense, but I always try to package it in a way that may, maybe allows people to see it from a new angle to open up like a, a way of looking at that, a way of thinking about it would empower them in some way to, to put their ideas out there. Because really what it comes down to is it, a lot of the stuff is hard to explain because a lot of like the, the root of it is, oh, you just got to do it. You just got to do it. But people are sick of hearing you just got to do it. So I just try to get clever with how I, I kind of position it. And really the thing that I measure and I filter all my ideas through is like, would I say this to my friend? Like, would I like, I, I imagine someone on the other side of the camera saying this in like the most succinct, clear way as possible. And would that be useful information? And I try to say like, is, is this useful information to so-and-so? And, -so? and I, like, I picture a friend of mine that I might be saying this to. And if it is, then, I, then it's a good idea. Uh, but I think a lot of people would argue that everything I'm saying is pretty obvious. But sometimes the obvious stuff repeated is, is what people need. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely true. And how do you get over the idea of, well, maybe this is just too simple or like everyone has said this before and like, why should I like even try this? Like, I don't really yeah. have anything to say. Like, how do you get over that? That's a really good question. How do you get over that? I think that, well, what I've realized is that, especially when you're putting out stuff on the internet, you know, it's hard. <laughs> like everyone that's getting this is at a different point in their journey. And, you know, there might be a subsection of people that like, this is the perfect thing that people need to hear and see. Uh, there's other people that see it and be like, man, that's so obvious. Um, and if it is obvious, then that means you probably don't need my content as much, <laughs> you know? So, so I really try to look at what's useful for me, what I have to, cause I, I, honestly, a lot of times I have to remind myself of these principles. So there's things that like I learned three years ago that like, oh, it opened up a new way of seeing things at the time. And then I kind of drifted back into my old habits. And sometimes I, I have to remind myself. So I realized that like a lot of the time I'm fine with the uh, coming off as simple as long as I feel like people are responding to it in a positive way and people are gaining something from it. You know, we're all kind of artists at heart. And we want to do something super fancy, super something, something super complex. But really, like, the, the key to a great message online is, is, is it clear? Can someone retain this information? Can someone share it to a friend? And so, sometimes, you know, the stuff that's too complex doesn't, doesn't really sit well with people. And uh, so, yeah, I try to just meet people where they're at and, and package stuff in a, in a simple way. With me working in, like, film and TV and all that, like, we have such a high standard of, like, the content that you want to put out. And it's sad because sometimes me and some other of my friends, we end up almost not doing anything because we're afraid that we're not going to hit that mark. You know, yep. like we want to shoot things. We're like, we want it to look great. We want it to have good sound, and good music and this and that and the editing. And then by the time that you think about everything that you have to do, you're exhausted and you don't want to like sit down and like do the video, even if the idea is good. So I'm always inspired. Like a lot of the times I would wake up in the morning 
check my phone and then I see on Instagram and, and you just posted something that is one of those little like, uh-huh, like, yes, uh -huh. of course, like I should be doing that. So Thank you. How, how do you get through that process of like, you know, I have this idea and then I have to set up the camera, light it, I have to like write it down, talk to the camera, then I have to bring the footage. Like it takes a lot of work. Like I really appreciate your little shorts. They look amazing and I love them. And I know, dang, that's a good idea. And the execution is awesome. Like how do you manage that to keep putting out so much content? Yeah, also a great question. And, I, and I'm with you. You know, you, I, I think I, I kind of come from a similar background. I have a lot of friends that are filmmakers and they like the content that I create, but like they have different goals. They, they want to do traditional film. They want to do stuff in that direction. And so their approach is going to be slightly different than mine. I, I always try to look at because like there's so many people with different goals. Uh, and and I, whenever I have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with someone, I'm like, all right, before I give you any tips, like – What are your goals? Like, what is the win for you? Like, when a year from now, all of this stuff that you've created, what does win a win look like? And then I try to reverse engineer the conversation. And for me, my win uh, on on these social accounts is is try to I impact, uh, help people create with confidence and make money with the stuff that they create. And for me to do that, the name of the game on social media is consistency. And I came from the music industry right so we would like the process of going from song recording the song to shooting the video to putting it out it would take like three to six months right by the time it's mixed it's mastered the video is edited, all the feedback and edits and that and that is just way too long and it's for one it, song yeah yeah it's way too long in this day and age i mean i mean that, that was like you know early when quantity of con uh, content wasn't a as important to grow on social media or, or, or to build a brand online but now mm. that's the name of the game so i wanted to create a format that was sustainable that was enjoyable to me and and was also helping me develop better skills so that's why i created the format of content that i created on bonus footage so if you look at sustainable like so i love vlogs like i i if i could like you know and every now and then I'll, i'll film a vlog for fun with my wife and we'll go on an adventure but like i realize that's not a sustainable format to build a brand off of uh one because no one's searching vlogs Like, no one cares about you unless you're famous, right? And also, they're way harder to film. So I was like, okay, that's not the style of content I can create. Even though I love that and I'll do it every now and then, the style of content for me to be con as cons consistent as I need to be, it's going to be these talking head videos that are short. The, the next part was uh, uh, something that I enjoy. So I love writing. I love shaping words. I love the idea of how words... Like, th th this is a fascinating idea to me that, like, you know, words are just, like, symbols that we turn into meaning. And then, like, we, <laughs> you know, everyone else kind of filters it through their own meaning and, 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 and gets an understanding of uh, and tries to figure out to the best of the ability what that person's saying, right? For me, like, when I'm packaging words together, it's fascinating to me that, like, just the way I position these words. People don't look at, like, a power graph that you write as creative. But there's people that, like, can package a short paragraph in a, a specific way that goes viral right and they're really good at it they can shape it in a way that connects it with people and just because they move this word here cut this fluff here um put the meaning put the hook like this like that i love that and that's where i decided to put my creativity in how i shape the message in my videos it's less about the sh the, the 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 flashy cuts and the flashy edits uh and the filmmaking and the cinematography it's more about getting the message tight and get, making the message shareable and making the message um, uh, insightful for, for creative people that are trying to put their ideas into the world. That was important to me, and, and I enjoy that. And then the third one is, is this making me better? So, yes, I believe that it's making me a better communicator for a couple a couple of reasons. One, it helps me get clarity to my ideas. Every single time I create a short, it helps me get cl clear on how I actually think about this because I have to internalize it, write it, record it, say it to a camera, put it to the world. And in the process of doing that, you sharpen your thinking. I also want to get into uh, public speaking and doing more communicating uh, in, in front of groups, in front of people. I, I think that short form video content isn't going anywhere. 
right? Attention spans aren't getting longer. So if I can get better at communicating these short ideas on camera in front of people, um, I'm developing useful skills that I can, you know, apply in so many different situations. So those are the three main reasons for me building bonus footage. So even if this account doesn't blow up, right, I'm still getting better at becoming a communicator. And that's, that's like the, the, the most important part for me. That's amazing, man. So you mentioned that you want to start helping creators create more and also make money. I think we all know that everyone online trying to create content, at the end of the day, you want to attach some sort of business model to that and then find a way to monetize being well known, yep. your classes that you could sell, the events that you could sell later, all of that. So I know that you have in the podcast interview tons of influencers, people from all ranges, all famous people. How have you seen that people go from being like a small creator into starting to work with brands and then eventually, I think ev most people are trying to figure out how can they live from creating content so they don't yep. have to have a, a job that they hate. So if we could start there and then if we could take it deeper and, and then talk about like how to make big, big, big bucks. Like if you have any insight on that, but if yeah. we could start with the, with the beginning, how do you see that transition from just a hobby into now this is an actual business that I can pay my rent with? Well, so the beauty of what I'm doing is I don't see myself as an expert. I see myself more as a journalist. So I told you about some of the background working in the music industry, working with brands, working as a freelancer, working as a creator myself. So I started this new account and I wanted to start from scratch because I wanted to feel what it felt like to go from zero to actually building an account to monetize it and then build a product or a brand around it. So in the process, I can share my insights as a journalist, less as a, an expert, right? So I'm experiencing it right now. So I've worked in brands in the past with brands as a freelancer, but that's different. That's a different thing. You're creating a deliverable that they own and you're giving it to them. Working with brands as a creator is different because you're making it and it lives on your channels, right? You're giving like part of your deliverable is giving that brand your exposure, your trust and attention with your audience. And that's what I started to realize. Like that's what you're selling to these brands. And that trust, attention, that loyalty from your audience needs to be protected at all costs. So my whole thing is fi figuring out your positioning, like who your audience is, and then think about what your audience actually needs. And then think about like when brands reach out to you, is this brand actually useful to my audience? Like will, this is a tool, a resource that I genuinely would talk about and share with a friend. And, and for me, that's where I draw the line. Like if it's not, then I don't talk about it for a couple of reasons. One, my audience will see right through it. Two, the more I like these brands, the better the videos are that I make for them. So naturally, they get better results. I feel better. And then I have a great portfolio piece of a great piece of content then I can show future brands. So that's sort of my positioning on that. But I'm starting to realize, so I have a couple ongoing brand deals now with brands I love, and I'll, I'll say them. So AppSumo, Contra, Lumanu, Influent, um, Creator Now, uh, th those are a couple of the brands that I'm working with. And some of them, it's like kind of consulting behind the scenes. Um, others, it's more uh, as a creator, uh, you, know, you know, using my audience to, to get exposure. And for me, these are all really cool brands that I believe in that I would act, I've, I've, I've actually recommended these to people. And that's important. Mm -hmm. But I realized there's, only, there's almost so much, so much inventory in your in your creator ecosystem for brand deals. Like you can only do so much a month until you're burnt out, you're not delivering a good product for them. Um, so for me, I'm starting to realize like, okay, I gotta get back to building the audience, right? Like building a, a, a bigger platform to then create my own product for. And I think that's where the next move is. I'm gonna create a product and I'm playing around with it. I do a bunch of free workshops and stuff and you can go to my um, tomboy.co and get some of my freebies there. And I do these little free workshops because I'm kind of figuring out what my product market fit is, like what I want to teach around. Because I want to teach around something that I, I, I actually have a, uh, a, a specific knowledge around, but um, I, I feel like is worth the investment. Yeah, and, and I, I'm not sure about what that is yet. So I'm testing it right now with workshops and I'm getting feedback from the audience on 
one, what they want, but two, what I enjoy teaching around. So eventually, I'm going to probably create a product. I want to do a, a course or, or, or something within the $200 to $300 range, and I, and I want to model my brand. I very much see what I'm trying to do as the video version of Jack Butcher. Uh, I don't know if you know Jack Butcher of Visualize Value, but he created a course called Build One, Sell Twice. And it's all about uh, you know uh, uh, productizing your your um, your brand online uh, and, and 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 building a product out of it, and I, I just love that I love his format I love how he approaches it, and that's 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 how I'm positioning it and then eventually it get equity in really cool companies and have some of these uh, go crazy or build my own company or build like my own startup in some way but I don't know if I want to go that route I think I kind of like I like the idea of like a lifestyle creator where I don't have other bosses I kind of like doing my own thing so if, if you can tell give me an example like with AppSumo like I, I know AppSumo is this big uh, software marketplace Noah Kagan is the founder I'm yep. really good friends with Jeremy I think that's how you and I got connected so if you can that get is. into it I think I think Noah doesn't care about talking numbers and all of that, so I, I don't want you to share anything that you don't want to, but if you can give me the, an example, like how did that brand deal happen and kind of how the process is. So if anyone is listening and they're thinking about going out and getting a brand to get deals to fund their content or they're getting people reaching out to them, they can kind of see like, oh, this is how it's done like usually so they don't get screwed over yep. or anything like that okay so i'm gonna tell I'm, this is the most important thing and this is the most important thing for every single industry it's all about building relationships i promise you right so everyone sees brands as brands they say oh they have all this money they like why can't they just pay creators more they all get, get in this fuss and like they kind of like look at this brand with like this like victim mentality but these brands one, the person you're talking to at the brand doesn't own the brand. The guy that owns the brand is somewhere like in his in his house, like chilling. Like he doesn't care about even the guy that you're talking to. You know what I'm saying? It's just a guy. It's like a, a person that works at this job that has similar goals to you. So brands are not brands; they're people. They're they're individuals at these places. So my whole thing, because I I worked at brands, right? So I I know what it feels like. Like and they have bosses, and they have bosses, and like every time a check is cut. All these people got to check off on it. So I understand like the ecosystem of it. So I realized I'm just going to start building relationships with people. It wasn't even like an average, like opportunistic way of looking at it. It was just like people at brands that like I admire. So, you know, probably six to eight months, you know, one, I, I met Jeremy that works at AppSumo with Noah over probably 12 months ago now. Then I did a couple creative calls with him and the team. I'm just going to tell you like kind of like the like what a relationship with a brand looks like. And then I met uh, the, the head of influencer partnerships that also works on that team. Right. So then I did a couple of consulting calls with them. I, d I, I helped them with a promotion that they did in the fall. And then more recently, the, I think this December, um, I finally talked to them about like, hey, actually, let's do a monthly partnership because the timing was right. Then they had an influencer program and they wanted uh, they wanted to work with me on my content and do some whitelisting. So it took about seven months for that brand deal to actually happen. And I will tell you, I, I don't want to say specifics with numbers because I, I don't know how much they pay other people, but I know that they pay me more than I should be getting paid. And the reason... Don't say that, Tom. They're paying you less than no, you no, 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 no. Technically, like, like, so if you look at follower count, so a lot of people look at, oh, at this follower count, I should get this much. But that's like, you can't measure the trust, the impact, the connection that that per just because that they have that follower count doesn't mean that they have those things with their audience. So brands look at me and they say, this is a trusted source within this space. And they're willing to pay more for that because you see it in my comments and you see me engaging in my comments and and it's it just a, it, I, I make it apparent and I also do a little trick. Um, so when I send over like the numbers and, and like, the, you know, sort of like what my brand looks like as a whole, I have a whole PDF of screenshots of people saying like, hey, from listening to this video, I ended up making Three hundred dollars more on my videos. From listening to your videos, like I started my own brand. From this watching your video, I, I I landed this brand deal. Like like I have all the screenshots to say that. So that makes the emotional connection with the brand much more real 
feels tangible. They understand how my audience feels when they look at my content. So that's what, that's a little trick that I do because uh, I don't have like the biggest audience right now, but I, I have a I have a mighty audience right now, and, and it's uh and it's super engaged. They totally see that, and they're they're willing to pay more for that. I don't know if that's as specific as you want me to get on the brand deal. I can yeah, I yeah, can that, go. That's perfect. Yeah. I knew a little bit of the backstory, and I wanted you to kind of put it out in a timeline and tell the story so people can understand. To be successful in media and the things that we do, you need to be connected. And people just don't understand that. Like from my own experiences, the opportunities that I have had to work and the projects and uh, the companies that I've been able to work at have always come 50% with the talent and the effort that I put in and then 50% with the connections and the friendships that I had and that I just developed. People a lot of the times don't realize because they're so focused creating their piece of content that they forget that they need to put it out there and they need to connect and collaborate with other creatives and other people in the industry because that's how you level up. You cannot level up just in your room making something. There are some pieces and some moves that are made that happen when you go out to dinner with this friend and then they introduce you to this other person. We're still social creatures with a small network of trusted people. And until you get to a level where you're extremely famous and then you can reach out to anyone, e even at that level, like I, I work at Impact Theory and I see whenever Tom wants to reach out to a, a, a guest or like someone that we want to bring on the show and they're a big personality, it's not like we just say, oh, we are also have a famous person, famous person to famous person and then it happens. No, a lot of the times, it takes months for the team to go behind and try to find what avenue we can create that connection. So I, I really like that you told that story and I want people to understand that the more connected you are, the better even the content is gonna end up being because you're informed and you can place yourself in, in different situations. So I wanted to ask you the next question and, and touch a little bit on, yeah, you want to say something? I want to say one thing about that. So yeah, yeah. in that story, I want to make it clear that all of my brand deals, when I initially met them, like the brand deal did not happen overnight. I simply treated it as uh, some of them were through relationships, other were through DM. And I just say, hey, let's get on a call and talk about and talk about some of the goals of, of, of what you guys are trying to achieve, right? So the whole approach is you can figure out ways to get them outcomes now. You don't have to wait like to your audience is a certain point. You can help them with strategic ideas. You can help them with connections. You can, you know, there's so many different ways to provide value. So I would just like to, hey, like it's a, especially in the creator economy, like people are so supportive. So I would just send a hey, DM, like, hey, we'd love to get on the phone, chat about how, uh, you know, uh, 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 ways that we could collab or, uh, you know, we could help, I could help you reach some of your goals and just make it about them. And most of them, I'm telling you, like three months later, it didn't like the brand deal went like started to work out. Like, and this is like, I'll tell you the, the example, right? Because I learned this as being a freelancer. Not everyone has the budget right away. Not everyone has the specific campaign that's right for you right away. Not, not like it just doesn't line up. It's not that you should take it personal or it means anything on you or your brand. It just doesn't make sense right now. But then eventually, you know, I, like I remember like someone from a brand I'm working with now, um, someone at the team saw one of my TikTok and like, I guess sent it to the Slack group. And then like the person that was on the team was like, hey, like, I actually know that guy. I've talked to him before. And like they were like, great, we should work with him. And then it like that's when it made sense. I think a lot of people look at this as like a quick one-off transaction. These are relationships you're building. And the other beauty is a lot of these people at these companies, you don't know where they're going to go next. They're all moving up in these cool companies. So build the relationship. Maybe at the next company they work at, then it makes sense for you to work with them. So that, that's my little quick uh, insight around like building relationships don't don't seek transactions yeah that is so powerful and my next question Tom I wanted you to touch a little bit on things that you have learned from all of these big influencers that you have on the podcast the things that they have learned throughout the process and maybe some commonalities that you're seeing in these people who are successful at creating media and grabbing attention what do you see there that is like that's is there like a special thing that they have or that they learn? What do you think? All right. So the thing that I, I usually go to and I, I believe that this is true is the genuine curiosity 
that the best creators have. You can follow all the quick tips, the hacks, what the marketing gurus are saying, all you want, right? But you're still gonna run out of steam. I think the creators that have sustain, that can sustain their success over the long haul are people that follow their genuine curiosity. And it's, so it's more about direction than activity, right? So they've like, they've built their brand around something that they're genuinely curious about. Like Colin and Samir. They are genuinely curious about the creator economy and what's happening in this space. Like they, they're like the sideline reporters for the creator economy. And you can tell that they enjoy it and they love it. It, it is, And that is what keeps their engine running, right? If they were just, like you see a lot of people hopping on the creator economy train, but they, re, you can, they don't really care about it. You see, you actually can see that they care. Someone like Casey Neistat, he was thriving in New York City. And I know that like he kind of like put the, the vlog on hold, but he's admitted that when he went to LA, he just wasn't inspired by the by LA as much as he was New York City. And I believe that he had genuine curiosity around New York City and what was gonna unfold in each vlog, in each video, in each story with each character. Like that is what continued to drive him in each of those videos. So I mean even Tom Bilyeu, right? Like you can tell he's trying to master excellence in, in these interviews, right? He wants to extract this information so he can selfishly uh, apply it to his, him, like his mission, right? And we all learn vicariously through him. And that's where the curiosity thing comes through. If you're genuinely curious about this direction that you're going, that you're exploring, look at it as more of an explorer, less of a, a, com a competitor. If you're looking at it as like, I'm an adventurer here, you're willing to stumble. You're willing, because you're like, hey, I'm just figuring this out. I'm just going this path and I want to see what gets revealed. But you're not judging yourself by the lack of results or, or, or a return on metrics that the world is telling you that you should have at that point. Yeah, that's, that's so important. And I think if you match that authenticity with the consistency that you mentioned earlier, eventually it's going to give you the results. Like exactly. And that's how you stay consistent the following, you know, things that you're genuinely curious about. Like I've even realized on my podcast, for me, it's like I'd rather interview someone with 10 followers that I had genuine curiosity around than someone with a million that like just got a million for like a random reason that, you know, wasn't really exciting to me. Right. And so that's what I realized. Like I have to align my conversations around that. It makes me a better, better interviewer when I actually care about what the person's doing. Yeah, of course. And that's the reason why I wanted to have you on the podcast because I'm, I selflessly want to ask you these things because I want to know what advice would you give me? Like, I think yeah. we, we could get into there. Like my goal is to make like the biggest blockbuster films ever and entertain and inspire millions of people. And I also want to be, have like a personal brand that people know, okay, Axel, he's like, like a thought leader in culture and media and all of that. So what do you think I, I could be doing better? Yeah. So what are your platforms for publishing content right now? Right now I have Instagram It's where I have like all my behind the scenes and it's the one that I enjoy the most, to be honest, yep. because I, you get, it's easier to like create something, put it out there and you automatically receive like feedback. The platform that I want to grow the most, but is weak is my YouTube channel. So right now I have my main YouTube channel has about 2000 subscribers and there I put short films that I have directed and I create some content around filmmaking and like editing and cameras and like a little bit of behind yep. the scenes of the business side of filmmaking. So that channel, I would love to grow it and just make it like my big piece where I'm creating all my content. Yeah. And then I just started doing the podcast as a separate channel because I know the algorithm. I was putting the podcast in my main channel, but because of the length, the algorithm like doesn't work well with that so i created a separate channel that is just going to be the podcast with these interviews that my goal with that podcast is to have something like you know joe rogan not so much like tom i think my my approach is going to be more conversational but that's what i'm going for to have a an amazing podcast that i can have people like you and like interesting creators and artists and all kinds of high level people come to the podcast so that's yep. right now kind of my strategy and then i play with twitter just because of the nft space and 
that yeah. one is just for fun. Like if it grows, it's great, but I'm not, I'm not sweating it or like putting in a lot of attention. I just go there to like interact with people in the NFT space. I don't, I can't remember the exact quote, but I totally agree with it. And I, th I like, this is something I already like, I, I understood the idea that the, the best creators are more content strategists than creators. Content strategy is just, it's just how they think about their brand, how they think about how the content all works together. Like, of course, you have some people that are just artists. They throw it out there. They really don't care what sticks, right? But, like, I like to think, like, okay, if I really have a mission with what I'm trying to do, I want to package it in a way that people are willing to consume and, and, like, package it in a way where people are right now and where attention is. I believe that short-form video content is something that everyone can and probably should leverage unless you already have a big channel like if i already had a youtube channel with like a million followers i probably wouldn't focus on short form as much as possible but for building a new audience in today's day and age short form content is your best bet because tiktok instagram t uh, twitter not yet but not really uh but youtube right they're all competing with each other for attention they're all competing for that short format i would try to find a format a series where you can show your specific knowledge around filmmaking using short form content. It can be very different than mine. It can like, it could almost be, the way I see it is, it almost packages some of your, um, your long form YouTube channels, but into like 30 second bits, right? So maybe it's just like a beautiful shot of B-roll and you're doing voiceover explaining how you got it. Or just like a, li like some, like behind the scenes stuff that is also super polished in your in like your style of filmmaking because what happens is you'll start to build this audience based off of your expertise in filmmaking right so then once you have that audience then you can raise money to shoot that short form then you can um, you know take all of that the media machine that you're building and then start funneling your bigger ideas through that and short form video content like you could create that one asset. It could work on YouTube, Instagram Reels, and you, it, filmmaking is popping on Instagram Reels. Like that's a big, yeah. like I think I think you could come up with a series. It might take like, I would do like 30 videos without really thinking of like a creative constraint. Just do 30, 30 second videos. Then look at the 30 videos and be like, okay, those three I really like, but those two I really liked and the audience really liked them too. So maybe I make a whole series out of them. So what I like to do is throw a bunch of stuff at the wall, see what sticks, and then do more of that, and then repeat, right? So I think that's what you could do within your lane. And so my strategy for you, do you know Danny Gewurz on YouTube? Mm, no. He's a good friend of mine. He's a filmmaker, cinematographer. Uh, he built his YouTube's up to like 300,000. He's managed by uh, Matty Hapoya, the same manager. Um, that's in like the Peter McKinnon camp. He wanted to go the traditional filmmaking route, but he realized how slow it was. It took forever to get funding for a concept. It's like he like it, uh, every like you know being on a set with a big crew like it just took forever. But he wanted to go from idea to publish much quicker, and he was able to do that on YouTube. So he figured out a way, and he started before shorts were a thing and built built his account. Uh, I think if you were starting now, the best angle is probably – uh, that's what I believe. I might be biased because that's my angle. Uh, mm -hmm. But what happens is he built that channel. Now he's using that as the machine, and he's starting to create content for big brands. Um, he's even, like, raising money for a Netflix movie, right? Like, like he wants to uh, – uh, a movie that he ends up wants, wanting to bring to Netflix. The audience allowed him to do that. Like, if he, if he was just someone all, off the street – he wouldn't be able to do that. So I would say use your use short form content to package up your expertise in an effort to build an audience. Then you can filter all of your ideas through that. that that's okay. what that's what my thinking would be. And I think that you could definitely do it. I like I know that I, I, I like I, I it makes a lot of sense to me. I would also say prioritize one of those things. So you talked about the YouTube and the podcast um, and, and the Instagram. I would pick one of them to be like your baby for like six months and be like, yo, I'm only, like, you can still do the other ones, but when you're thinking about content strategy and like the actual marketing around, I would pick like one of them to put 80% of your, 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 your output into. It's harder to follow it than you think, but no, I, I think that's really which good part, advice. Which part is harder? I think just the, the scale of it, 
uh, that's something because I have a lot of other things uh, going on and that's yeah, always yeah. like time yeah. is always like the, the biggest constraint but this year I've made an effort to invest time into creating content because I believe building that audience and the platform is going to be so so much useful and also every month that goes by without me investing in my personal brand I'm losing out in millions of dollars in in 10 years from now where I'm Ooh. going to regret that I didn't put in the effort now. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna give, okay. Instead of looking at it the way I, I said it, 30 things, all this stuff, wh this is what I would do. Three reels a week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Three 30 second reels, they can be messy, they can be behind the scenes, just three of them. They can be any style, like it could just be B-roll with music. Just go repurpose old content. And what I would do is spend time on Saturday morning editing those three reels and then just have them ready for that week. And then that's three. By the end of the month, you'll have 12. After three of them, what's the math? 36. That's 36 more than you have now. And one of them could pop off, jump you 10 grand, and then all of a sudden you get this momentum that then you can like start you know, running your ideas through. For sure. So oh, start I'm, with I'm, one brick at a time. One yeah. brick and by brick, I mean real. Thank you so much, Tom. So my last question to finish, if you could build anything, if like money was not a problem and you could go and pursue anything that you wanted, what would that be? Man, that's a great question. Um, okay, I would say the education system would have to, I would want it to entirely change. Uh, I don't think, I fundamentally think that children should not sit at a desk for six hours out of the day um, during the, the most useful, high energy, like exciting years of, uh, uh, you know, like developmental years, right? I think that they need to be hands on, building things, moving around, playing, getting, t like, getting, doing instead of, being taught they need to be actually doing things because that's where actual learning comes from so i, I would I, and then I'll, so that's one thing like actually the education side of 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 the education system like totally transforming that and part of that education is teaching people how to make healthy eating decisions and and educating people on what they're actually consuming where to get the best food how to get the best food how to get it how to get it affordably uh and 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 helping them make decisions around eating not telling them what to eat but like making decisions and actual um you know like the people that tom tom interviews the people that uh some of my favorite uh, you know like people that are actually specialists just need to come in and totally change the information that people are getting in these schools and then and part of that is feed give them healthy options in the cafeteria because if they're seeing you know sloppy joes and pizzas and nachos every single day they're thinking oh i trust this institution for what they're giving me it must be healthy to always eat this way but it's not and i think that it, it's a uh, it's i eat extremely healthy and i enjoy every bite of food i take i enjoy the process and i i just wish i learned how to how to uh, eat that way earlier and i think a lot of people would be happier feel better be happier in their relationships if those two things happen doing and learning and, and developing skills actual skills instead of just memorizing things and then becoming better decision makers around what they're putting in their body i think that's important so i'm gonna do that by the way like th that that's like the next like that, that's the next level up after the, the creator brand that I'm building here is, is, is being part of, of companies that are on the cutting edge of doing those things. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and share this interview with a friend if you think that is valuable. And again, I'll see you in another episode. And, and do me a favor, share Axel's reels and YouTube shorts when they're up because this guy is an incredible storyteller. I'm so excited to see the next move in your brand.